Hey everyone, Disappointed Giant here. I've been playing Dead Cells for almost five years at this point and have cultivated a collection of strategies and tips that might help folks who are new to the game and are trying to get that first win. Some of the things I'm going to talk about are general tips to help optimize your builds, some are explanations of the game's core mechanics, and others are just personal preferences that I have when it comes to unlocking items and for choosing to play the way that I do. Things like stat distribution and meta upgrades are objectively important to understand and utilize, but things like my opinion on when to unlock certain items are subjective. Take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't for someone else. Part of what makes Ted Cell such an amazing game is that it offers a ton of options for builds and lots of flexibility to dig into your personal playstyle as the game opens up. Quick note here, I'm not going to go into the thick of it of how specific weapons work or how to defeat certain bosses in this video, but I might end up doing things like that in the future. I have a lot of experience and a lot of opinions on a lot of things, but I'll try to save those for another time and place. There's a bunch of information to go over here, so let's take it from the very beginning where I can fundamentally break things down step by step. There are timestamps in the description in case you want to skip ahead to a specific section. So, you just bought Dead Cells, or you've been playing for a little while and don't seem to be making much progress. You've unlocked some things, maybe fought the first boss, but haven't been able to beat the game. Maybe you had a great weapon that disappeared after you died. What gives, right? The first important thing is to cover what kind of a game Dead Cells is. In broad terms, it can be classified as a game in the roguelike genre, which means that whenever you die, you'll start back at the beginning of the game again without any of the items you had in your last game. Each attempt at playing the game is called a run. The levels in the game are the same, so for example, you'll always start a run in the prisoner's quarters level, but the way that they're built is always different. The game uses something called procedural generation to make levels from scratch when the game loads, so every time you play the game it will look familiar, but the levels themselves will never be designed in the same way. This is usually a staple of the roguelite genre, which encourages players to repeatedly experience familiar areas in new ways while improving their skills. Procedural generation helps keep the game fresh after dozens and even hundreds of runs. I'm proof of that. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description to Motion Twins video explaining how the system works and how it was built. Another way that Dead Cells works is through what's called meta progression. Once you unlock an item in the game, that item gets added to the item pool, and whenever you unlock a permanent upgrade, that upgrade will always be part of your gameplay. An example of unlocking an item is if you find a new weapon blueprint and then spend cells to unlock it from the collector, who's the character that you'll meet between levels who sells you upgrades and items. After you unlock that weapon by spending the cells, it will be in your item pool, which means that it will always have the chance to show up in the game, but is not guaranteed to be available. Item drops are random, but they pull from the game's item pool, so the more things you unlock, the more things you can use and the more varied your runs will be. An example of unlocking a permanent upgrade is when you buy the recycling ability, which will allow you to take unwanted items and recycle them into money. Once recycling is unlocked, the ability will always be available as part of your gameplay in future runs. These upgrades are at the top of the collector's list, so they're easy to see. As you play, you'll notice that the items you find have colors and that there are three numbers in the lower corner of the screen that correspond to these colors. By default, they're red, purple, and green, although you can change these colors through the accessibility settings in the options menu. The color red is for brutality, purple for tactics, and green for survival. Each color has its own identity and a different style of gameplay. The surface level way to think about it is, think about playing brutality like using a dexterity build, so it has moderate HP and faster short range weapons like knives and small swords. Tactics is a glass cannon ranged build that utilizes bows, turrets, and other ranged items so you can defeat enemies at a distance. Survival is your tanky sword and board build so you'll see a lot of heavy, slow weapons, shields for parrying, and skills that can restore hit points. The traits of these colors aren't exclusive though, as you'll notice that there are items that are dual scaling, which means that they are associated with two colors. One item like this that you're guaranteed to find in your early runs is the Wolf Trap. The Wolf Trap roots an enemy in place so you can defeat it from afar, so tactics, and also gives you the option to use a slow attack to defeat the enemy without it having the chance to respond, which is survival. As you play, you'll see lots of items that are dual scaling, which further increase your gameplay options since they can be used with more than one color. The way that you should be playing Dead Cells is to choose one primary color to use for a run and then lean into that color completely. 
Every time you increase one of your stats, all items of that color gain a plus 15% damage bonus. This stacks multiplicatively, which means the more that you have of one color, the more significant each stat upgrade will be. Whenever you find an upgrade scroll, you want to choose your primary color so items that are associated with that color will do more damage. It may be tempting to take a color that has more hit points since it seems like that might help you succeed. While you'll potentially be living longer, that decreases the effectiveness of your main color items as the game goes on, which means that while you'll have more hit points, you'll also be doing less damage, which means it'll take longer to defeat bosses Bosses, which means they'll have more time to attack and defeat you. You want to have as much damage available to you as possible, and the way to do this is to pump every single scroll you see into your primary stat. If you see a dual color scroll that does not have your color of choice, so for example, if you're playing Brutality and you see a scroll that only increases your tactics or your survival stat, you'll want to take the color that gives you the largest hit point bonus of the two since your primary color is not an option. Using this strategy ensures that you're dealing as much damage as you can while also taking the opportunity to get the largest HP bonus when they're available. Another way to maximize the effectiveness of your build is to take mutations that are the same color as your primary color. Between each level, you'll have the chance to choose or change your mutations, which are overarching bonuses or effects that you can use to customize your build. Generally, each color has mutations that will complement that color's style of gameplay. Examples of this are Tranquility, which is a tactics mutation that gives you a damage bonus when you aren't close to any enemies, a staple of basic tactics gameplay. Or the Brutality mutation Killer Instinct, which grants skill cooldowns on every melee kill. There are some exceptions to this rule as you unlock more things and refine your gameplay style, but as a beginner, you'll generally want to use either a mutation that is in your main stat or is at the bottom of the list in the colorless section. Each color has three basic mutations, and their effects scale with the amount of scrolls you have in that color. So in the example above, if you use Tranquility, it will grant a higher bonus damage the more stats you invest into tactics. You'll unlock more mutations as you play the game, which opens up more possibilities for you to tweak your kit. One final mechanics note here. The default difficulty of the game is referred to as 0 BC, which means zero boss cells. When you beat the last boss on 0 BC, they drop a boss cell, which will allow you to increase the difficulty of the game by one level. When you do this, it's called 1 BC, and the game will tell you so. When you beat the last boss on 1 BC, you'll get another boss cell and can then play 2 BC. This continues and will allow you to increase the difficulty even more as you play on higher BC levels. You may hear about folks playing 5 BC, which is the highest difficulty the game has to offer. Okay, so I know that was a lot to talk about, especially right from the get-go, but these things are really important to know early on since they lay out the basic framework of how Dead Cells works. They'll also help you make informed decisions about what item and scrolls to choose based on your playstyle for that run, as well as the reasoning behind making some of those decisions. So now that we have the mechanics out of the way, here's my advice for people who are just starting the game and don't know much about how to put a build together. Try everything. Everything. Like, literally everything. There are hundreds of combinations for items that work well together, but instead of trying to focus on a specific build type that you might have read about or watched a video about, try it all. Since Dead Cells is random by nature, I think it's beneficial to embrace that randomness. If you focus on a build that's completely dependent on one item, your gameplay will suffer unless you have that item, which doesn't sound like a fun time to me. So start a brutality run and pick up the balance blade when you see it and try it out with the combo mutation. Choose tactics, pick up or unlock a bow, and play around to see how turrets like the sinew slicer work. Load your scrolls into survival and see how it feels to use frost blast to freeze enemies in their tracks while you beat them over the head with something heavy. Dead Cell's original slogan when it released was kill, die, learn, repeat. In my opinion, there's no better way to do that than to keep killing enemies, accept death when it happens, continue to learn, and then do it over again and again with the knowledge that you've gained from your last run. One of my greatest skills as a Dead Cells veteran is that I know how the items in the game work independently and in relation to one another, so I can adapt my build on the fly depending on what the situation calls for. One of the best ways to build muscle in Dead Cells is to experiment often and to find what weapons resonate with you. The item pool starts with a specific group of weapons, and as you play the game you'll inevitably find blueprints. These blueprints allow you to unlock an item after you complete the level that you're in. A way to think of these is that they unlock the ability to unlock the item from the collector. So if you die while carrying a blueprint, it will drop. The item will not be available to be unlocked, and you'll have to go get that blueprint again. Rough. You'll find all kinds of blueprints as you play, as most items are found this way. 
So as you play, you'll start getting blueprints and we'll see new items in the collector's menu. So which ones should you unlock and how should you prioritize the cells that you collect? The first things I recommend unlocking are the meta upgrades at the very top of the collector's list as these are the permanent upgrades I mentioned earlier. Health flask, recycling, gold reserves, and the random starting weapon options are all important. The health flask upgrades allow you to heal an extra time with each excessive upgrade. Recycling will give you more gold to spend during your runs. Gold reserves keep some gold for your next run when you inevitably die, which happens to all of us. And the random starting weapons are a great way to strengthen and vary your builds right from the beginning of the game. Some of these meta upgrades I mentioned are locked until you unlock several other items, so you may not be able to get them all at once. I don't recommend unlocking the backpack or the specialist showroom early on for reasons I'll explain later. After you've unlocked a few meta upgrades, I recommend starting to unlock some of the other items that become available to you as you start collecting blueprints. Like I said earlier, I think it's important to try everything, so if you see something you think you might like on that list and you have the cells to unlock it, just go for it. An important thing to mention here is that I recommend only unlocking one item at a time to give you a chance to use it and get comfortable with it before unlocking something new. Think about learning deep before learning wide. If you unlock five melee weapons at once, it'll be more difficult to settle in with most of them and they'll be added to the item pool without you having the experience of really trying them out and seeing how they work. If you get a blueprint for a mutation that you think would be cool, then just unlock it and see how it fits with your build. I recommend unlocking things out of the color you're playing so you can see how they fit in the playstyle they were meant to be in. An example of this is if you're playing Tactics, it doesn't make sense to unlock a slow survival weapon since your max HP will be relatively low and Tactics is generally focused around ranged items instead of heavy hand-to-hand -hand combat. Also, don't be afraid to unlock things. Like seriously, please, just do it. There's a custom mode option you can use in case you have something unlocked that you really don't like, but my counter argument to doing that is that Dead Cells is meant to be random by nature, and if you unlock something you don't like, then you can just recycle it or keep it in the item pool. There might be a time when your playstyle and preferences might change, and that item might fit just what you need. There are times now when I see something I used to dislike or just completely forgot about since I haven't used it in a while, and when I decide to pick it up, I might have a fresh experience. Keep an open mind and don't be afraid to spend those cells. What I definitely do not recommend spending cells on are outfits. The outfit feature was introduced way back in version 1.2 as a way for players to spend cells on something after everything else in the game was unlocked. They're just cosmetic and for early game it's more important to use those hard earned cells on things that will help improve your chance on winning runs, not things that make your character look different. If you get hooked on dead cells and continue to keep playing, I guarantee you that at some point you will have unlocked all of the upgrades and weapons and will only have outfits left to unlock. That's the time to spend cells on cosmetics since everything else, even hand hook, is more important than an outfit. A caveat to that is that there may be some outfits that resonate with you and your personal identity or expression, including some costumes that have female bodies or are based on characters from other games. If you want to get those to help connect and personalize your experience in a way that would be helpful, then you should absolutely do that. And the good news is that all of the outfits from the Everyone Is Here update don't cost any money. There's actually in-game things you can do to get those outfits, so you might find yourself getting some freebies along the way. The reason I don't recommend purchasing the backpack or specialist showroom yet is that their mechanics aren't that important for a new player since you should be focused on bettering your gameplay, unlocking upgrades and new items, and getting comfortable with making your builds. I do recommend unlocking the backpack after you've gotten comfortable with using your two main slots and your two skill slots and are ready to incorporate an extra item slot and mechanics into your run. Personally, I would say a good benchmark is maybe after you complete all of the main routes on 0BC or waiting until after you beat the game at least once, but your mileage may vary. The Specialist Showroom upgrade unlocks a bonus room in the Prisoner's Quarters that has an outfit, a single-use map, which is actually pretty useless and clogs up a skill slot, and an item called the Hunter's Grenade that lets you extract blueprints from monsters. I don't think these are necessary from the get-go, but they're definitely worth unlocking once you notice that your available items in the collector's menu are getting low, so that way you can use that hunter's grenade to find more blueprints and unlock more items. You'll also notice that after most bosses, you'll meet the blacksmith. This NPC can upgrade the default quality of your weapons. In order to get into the mechanics of the forge, we'll need to talk about gear levels and weapon quality. Gear levels are the numbers next to your weapon, so you might see an Ice Grenade 2 or an Electric Whip 4. The higher the number, the more powerful the weapon is. In addition to the numbered gear levels, there are four main weapon qualities in the game. There's the default quality, plus, plus plus, and S. The best way to think about these is that they add additional gear levels and bonus damage to your weapon. 
So a weapon with plus quality adds two levels, plus plus adds four, and S adds six. There are also L quality items that are super unique, but I'm gonna let you discover those on your own because they are pretty wild. So if you were to see something that's a four plus, that item would be equal to a six quality since the plus at the end of the four adds two gear levels. And if you got a three S, it would roughly be a nine because the S at the end of the weapon adds six gear levels. The blacksmith will allow you to invest cells to upgrade the default chance of items to be of higher quality in your runs. The first row is for plus quality and takes 500 cells to fill, but you can also partially fill the forge in 5% increments. So if you fill up 10% of the total, you'll have a 10% chance of finding plus quality gear. If you put in 65% of the total, you'll have a 65% chance of finding plus quality gear. This is one of the biggest grinds in the game, as you'll want to have your default gear quality be higher to match the difficulty that you're playing in. You'll see that the gauge stops at some point on 0 BC difficulty, but as you play higher difficulties, more of the gauges will be available to put cells into. So all of that said, my recommendation is to fill the plus quality slot up to 100% before starting 1 BC. I tend to play more conservatively on new save files when it comes to the forge level because I find that maxing out plus quality before increasing the difficulty makes future runs go way more smooth. As a final note here, you can break the door in the collector's room so you can start hoarding cells without needing to give any of them to him. If you're trying to put cells into the forge, I recommend saving all of your cells, breaking the door after the first boss, and then investing those cells with the blacksmith. It should only take several runs to do this since you're likely going to be getting more than 100 cells in the first few levels, but be wary of losing all your cells when you die. It's a delicate balance. Speaking of killing enemies to get goodies, most levels have a kill door after them. This means that if you kill 60 enemies in a level without taking damage, you'll get access to that door, which has cells, money, and higher quality items in it. There are some time doors after a few levels as well, which will reward you for playing quickly and rushing through the level, but I don't recommend going for those since it's best to kill as many enemies as you can to maximize your resources and to get practice in facing all of the various foes that you'll meet. I wouldn't obsess over it or restart a run if you get hit during a level, but I do recommend just trying to get those kill doors if you can, since the items inside can increase your chances of success. And if you don't get them, no big deal. Just keep on enjoying the game and improving your skills, and you'll probably find that you'll be getting the 60 kill doors in future runs no problem. I mentioned gold earlier, but I haven't talked much about it yet because there's just not much to it. When you kill enemies, find gems, and recycle items, you'll get some gold. Gold is a currency that will allow you to buy new items from shops and to re-roll your items. I'm not going to get deep into the mechanics of re-rolling items or what affixes and synergy are, but I'll link my face flask video in the description which gets into the affixes and synergies in a deeper way. These are important things to learn and be aware of, but I'd argue that it's more important to focus on after beating 0 BC and getting your legs under you. When you start playing the game, you may notice that certain areas are initially off limits. You might see a pile of green stuff that prompts you to tickle it, or tall corridors that you can't wall run up. There are items in the game called runes that give you permanent movement abilities. These are all incredibly important to find, and I don't recommend playing on a higher difficulty level until you find them all. I'm going to explain what each rune is and where to find it, as each rune acquisition requires a specific path to take, and also requires the last rune that you found. I recommend taking these routes one by one until you get the rune, and then after that, moving on to the next route and the next route until you have all the runes. At that point, you can go to whichever levels you want to, whenever you want to, since everything will be open. Make sure you fully explore the biome that the rune is in before leaving to make sure that you find it. The vine rune allows you to tickle those green piles of goop, which sprouts a vine that you can then climb up and use to access new areas. You'll find the vine rune in the Promenade of the Condemned, which is the second default level of the game. The teleportation rune will allow you to rub those tombstone-looking things and warp to new points around the map. This is found in the Toxic Sewers. You can find the Toxic Sewers by using the vine rune in the Prisoner's Quarters to access a new exit. The Ram Rune will allow you to slam down through breakable floors and is found in the Ossuary. The entrance to the Ossuary is located in the Promenade of the Condemned, all the way at the rightmost part of the map. The Spider Rune will allow you to run up walls and is located in the Slumbering Sanctuary by way of the Ancient Sewers. The Ancient Sewers entrance is located through a breakable floor in the Toxic Sewers. After beating the Ancient Sewers, you'll face the boss Conjunctivius. And then finally, after beating Conjunctivius, you can access the Slumbering Sanctuary. Whew. 
While not a rune specifically, I also recommend getting the cavern key at the very beginning of the game, then taking the same route you took to get the spider rune, but this time after you beat Conjunctivius, take the higher path to go to the graveyard level. The entrance to the cavern is behind a monolith in the graveyard, and once you beat the cavern, it will bring you to a new second boss. You'll need all of the previous runes before you can reach this area. After doing this, you have unlocked all of the movement runes and all of the potential passageways for the base game. Great work. I know this might not sound super exciting since there's a set order to unlocking these and runes are gate kept before the previous runes, but I promise you that having all of them will make your future runs way more fruitful since you'll have more movement options and more opportunities to find areas with new gear or blueprints. If you have any of the DLCs, now is a great time to start exploring those and integrating those biomes into your runs. As you play, you may see a chest that talks to you and asks you to hit it. These are called curse chests, and if you open one, you'll get a colorless item, a gem, and a scroll. You also get a curse, which puts a number over your head with the skull icon. In order to survive the curse, you'll need to kill that many enemies without taking any damage, including environmental damage like the poison in the sewers. These are basically required in higher difficulties, but I think they're negligible in 0 BC. If you want to roll the dice and risk ending your run, or if you want to celebrate certain victory after knowing you can clear that curse, then go right ahead and open the chests, but otherwise you can ignore them for now. And finally, the most important piece of advice that I can give you is don't stop here. These are just my opinions on what might help a new player understand the basics. There are tons of YouTube videos out there from folks who have lots of hours in Dead Cells, and some of their tips may be better suited for your style of learning or gameplay. Consult the wiki to find out more about how things work, what items do what, how to get where, and who the enemies are. I'll put a link in the description to the wiki. Above all, do more research, put more hours into the game, and never stop learning. Beating the final boss on 0 BC is just the beginning of your Dead Cells journey. There are five more difficulty levels to play, tons of blueprints to find, hundreds of items to experiment with, and many, many hours of enjoyment ahead. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions or need clarification on anything I talked about here, and I'll be happy to help out however I can. And if there are any other folks out there who have their own tips to share, then please leave a comment to lend your expertise to the community. As always, thank you for watching, and good luck out there.